Hi, this is Blackjack, coming to you from Scenic Blackjack's room, although you would never know it, because my stupid webcam decided that any amount of light was too much light, and started flickering, and it was even freezing at some points. I went into my den, where there is very little light, and it was just flickering so badly. I, I don't understand this shirts all bunching up. You know, I was actually really self-conscious about yesterday's video because of all the going on. But then I watched um, Video Games Awesome and Frash was like the whole time because he, he not only has allergies, he's also sick. And it's, you know, if he could have however many thousands of subscribers, you know, then I could sniffle in front of the camera every now and then. And not in the way I do in my videos where I talk about Sinnoh. But This time, however, we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball and Marvel Comics. So, yes. Um, I have skipped the ad at the beginning for some sort of sloth-based video game. I intend to skip the Blue Apron ad in the middle that I know is going to be there. So, let's get going. I love a powerful woman. Even better, one that keeps getting stronger and stronger. And today, we've got two of them. Android 18, the deadly cyborg Hi, killer Android. from Dragon Ball. And Captain Marvel, the hard-hitting, high-flying Avenger. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> In the age 700, I love the scenery in this series. To the Earth. Unsung heroes led by the Super Saiyan Goku had saved the world from an evil galactic tyrant. Everything seemed pretty hunky dory until a mysterious <laughs> time traveler showed up out of nowhere with a grave warning. In just three years' time, two deadly androids would rise up and ravage the Earth, all while wearing the mark of the long forgotten Red Ribbon Army. This sounds like it's gonna get complicated real fast. To be yeah. brief, the Red Ribbon Army was the greatest brief, military Dr. force brief. ever known, even greater than the Earth's entire armed forces combined. Until a tiny monkey child named Goku strolled through and wrecked their shit. Dr. Jiro, <laughs> founder and lead scientist of the Red Ribbon Army, held a grudge against Goku Ooh. for over 20 years. Like any mad scientist hellbent on revenge, the good doctor got back to doing what he did best. Building murder bots. The and so he designed some of his deadliest creations to date. And yes, I, I love Jero's hair. And Android Just putting that out there. Though Android isn't entirely accurate. 17 and 18 were actually humans once. Siblings even. So that makes them cyborgs, not androids. You so they're doctor with actually related? Know the difference. I'll just chalk it up to a classic case of revenge madness. That happens to the best of us. Android 18's real name is Lazuli. That is Sounds a like scene sort of from DBZ A Bridge. No wonder she kept the name 18 after brutally murdering her maker. Yeah, Android 18 and her brother were pretty unruly and a force to be reckoned with. Jiro, even with his own cyborg body, didn't stand a chance. With nothing better to do, the twins set off to ravage the world as predicted. But this time, something changed. I mean, they were After using actual the facts, the heroes, but the evolved, scene does not appear in the actual artist scene. Named Grillin, 18 had a change of heart and joined the good guys. She even wound up starting a family with Krillin. <laughs> nice, give it up for Krillin. Not only is he punching above his bracket, but he's laying pipe above it as well. <laughs> Plus, 18 doesn't really age, so that's a serious win. Android 18 is an extremely competitive fighter with numerous deadly abilities. She could probably get a, programming so like, from could she upgrade her body to age? Granting her incredible hand oh, and skills and mechanically enhanced senses for superb situational awareness. And she's got the strength to back it up. This chicken embed a person straight into the side of a cliff with a sick. Okay, I gotta say though, she's a teenager, right? Like when they meet. Or how long has it been since she was kidnapped and all this stuff did to her and turned her into a quote-unquote android, even though that's the wrong term? Also, I'm just putting it out there, that says HR in that shot there instead of RR. <laughs> also in the manga, Trunks says that she dresses like he does. So, 
<laughs> anyway, um, how old is she? Because Krillin's like in his late twenties in this arc, so yeah. Or shoot explosions out of her hands. She does this by harnessing ki, a Taoist-inspired life force energy manifested through a person's spirit and vigor. With her ki, eighteen to five energy cooking Energy beams powerful enough to destroy buildings, continents, possibly even planets. Like the finger beam. Oh. <laughs> Talk about getting finger blasted, am I right? No. Oh, you know you laughed. Absolutely not. <laughs> On the inside? Ugh. Android 18 has dozens of other techniques. Beer such and as infinity bullets. I know what you're thinking, but it's not 18. a magic gun with unlimited ammo. It's a stampede of energy blasts, which are nearly impossible to avoid. Her photon strike lays waste to a vast area in an instant. She can even use her husband's signature technique, the Destructo Disc. It's a buzzsaw made of pure <laughs> energy. Why don't more Dragon Ball characters use that thing? He is just as much a defensive tool as well. Android 18 can enhance her strength, speed, and endurance with her energy. They're all the limitations of her physical body. Oh yeah, and she can fly. Unlike most warriors, 18's energy supply stems from a sort of battery within. This system grants her a continuous and potentially endless supply of key. Yeah. She'll never get tuckered out. In fact, one of her favorite combat strategies is wasting time to make her enemy exhausted, then moving in to finish him off. She's making him burn up all his energy, and then she's going to attack him. Like many of Dr. Giro's other androids, it's even possible... See, I wouldn't mind if they used the DVZ abridged shot of where she's zooming away on the top of the car. Because they actually corrected an animation error, her tights weren't colored in. Possible for 18 to steal her foe's energy for herself by absorbing it through her body, increasing her power and nullifying her opponent. So like so Rogue. you can bet she'll always go the distance, like Rocky Balboa, except you know, way stronger and way prettier. <laughs> 18 is tough enough to deflect Goku's Kamehameha attack, even while he's in Super Saiyan Blue form. Also, she can kick this hard enough love to break Super Saiyan Vegeta's arm. What's so impressive about breaking an arm? You broke yours once just by falling out of your chair. Uh -huh. Didn't we broke a Super Saiyan you might have the arm? Super Saiyan part there. Vegeta's extremely high key levels improve his body to support an impressive amount of weight. Leading up to the fight, Vegeta was training in four hundred shoulders in this gravity, series, making his weight about fifty-five thousand pounds. That means the tibia in his leg would be supporting over 40,000 pounds, the equivalent of eight pickup trucks. Damn. Damn, I wish I had bones like that. I could fire so many bazookas and never have to worry about falling down. <laughs> On top of that, she's able to use her constant supply of key to easily match the speed of a Super Saiyan. We've previously established that an ascended Super Saiyan can fly approximately 340,000 miles per hour. Nice. So it's reasonable to believe 18 can do the same. Man, this key stuff is she serious. Can, can she awesome. keep up with the Maybe I further start levels? Meditating or something. Do you even know how? Yeah, all I gotta do is get drunk and sit on the floor crisscross applesauce style, right? Easy. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> just like Vegeta, Android 18's key allows her to survive serious blows. She's even tanked the full brunt of a Super Saiyan key blast, capable of obliterating an entire building without a scratch. Can't say the same for that sweet ass jacket. Yeah. Man, 18 is awesome. Awesome? Yes. Unstoppable? Not at all. Android 18 is unfortunately susceptible to a number of weaknesses, including yeah. her own programming. Fearing her unruliness, Juro designed her with a remote shutdown system in place, one that both he and Krillin's friend Bulma were able to exploit. Wow, so this little thing will stop them, huh? On top of that, 18 has a reputation of being cold second. and apathetic. Oh. Although, oh, crap. Come on. This is mostly just a guy. Oh, damn it. As she's always ready to defend her friends okay, and Okay, that little thing is going to remain on the screen she now. Even joined you Goku, can't even see the it. The man she was originally programmed to kill for an interdimensional tournament bent on saving the universe from annihilation. It's Sweet. safe to say that Super Saiyans are not the only blondes protecting the planet. <laughs> Believe me, when she gets that look in her eye, you better hold on to your Dragon Balls. I know I'm being hard on you, but it's the only way you'll learn. A little bit of Arukenimon there. Captain Marvel has had many names in her career, 
But when she was born, she was simply Carol Danvers. Carol grew up in Boston and joined the Air Force to pay for Air Force call side cheeseburger. She flew to the top of their ranks hey. before moving on to the Air Force intelligence. Then she joined NASA. Damn, is her superpower just having really badass jobs? Wonder if she could give me a recommendation. Working at NASA <laughs> like was pretty oddity. cool until aliens attacked. Carol got caught in the middle of a massive battle between the Kree aliens and a Kree superhero named Marvel, known to the world as Captain Marvel. Well, wait. Captain Marvel's secret identity is Marvel? Somebody forgot to read superheroes for dummies. Anyway, well, I mean, battle, come Carol on. This is also the same franchise that gave us. Magnetron, Actually, no. Which exploded. It's Luckily, the same genre, because that's from DC. Dexter the Cat became the Dexter the Red Lantern. With strands of Marvels. She developed an extra Kree brain lobe and gained most of Marvel's powers, Ew, transforming that would her be, into a new dynamic superheroine. Except she didn't even realize it at first. She'd just black out at random times and wake up to hear about a new suspiciously blonde superhero. Hey, Wiz, maybe I have a superhero side like this. I mean... I black out all the time! Boomstick, you don't have powers. You have a problem. Throughout her adventures, Carol went through several phases of superhero titles. First Miss Marvel, then Binary, then Warbird, then Miss Marvel again, until one day, Warbird. Marvel died. Here's to you, Marvel. To honor her Always has friend, a beer on Carol here. Danvers took up his mantle becoming the brand new Captain Marvel. I'm taking it. Captain you. Marvel is unbelievably powerful with superhuman strength and incredible durability. She learned how to fly Power planes in the Air Force, light. but now Whoa. she can fly herself and super fast. Speaking of which, through her time with the Air Force and as a member of the Avengers, and she's absorption. received years of quality combat training. Not only can she hit hard, she can fire powerful concussive blasts of photon and stellar light energy from her hands. There are you! Well as create energy fields. As if all that weren't enough, Carol can open up an extra can of whoop ass by absorbing energy. Absorbing anything from electricity to magic can make her even stronger. Can with she these absorb powers, key? Captain Marvel has done some pretty amazing things. While training with the Avengers, the combat simulation measured that she could deliver a force of 92 tons. Almost ten mm. times the destructive power of a Davy Crockett nuclear missile. She gets Davy Crockett. Blast to the face Saved the, the sun. For a long period of time. Once she flew from Broadway to the end of the atmosphere in only a minute and 58 seconds. That's a lot of ground uh, sky to cover in less than two minutes. Mm. She claims that's her personal record. Now, considering the distance between a New York City street and the exosphere, Marvel must have been flying 247 times faster than the speed of sound. Neat. Carol has taken out characters like Vision, punched Iron Man out of his armor, and wow. survived two point-blank blasts from the Destructor's beam, which has enough power to punch holes through an Imperial Kree starship. And that's not even the height of her power. If Marvel absorbs enough energy, she can access the powers of Binary. A form she took after losing her powers, getting lost in space, and being experimented on by aliens. Long as story. you do. As binary, Which I seems I have to say what's for video at least. Hole and generate star levels of energy. And her hair's on fire. And my head was on fire. Listening? That's like the least interesting thing about it. Says you. Look at it. Binary was an extremely powerful form, capable of wiping out entire fleets of enemy ships. But one that Captain Marvel does not have easy access to. She initially lost the form after expending all of its energy, and is unable to reach it again without absorbing a massive amount of interstellar energy, such as the infinite energy from a gravitational field of a black hole singularity. She's too stubborn to just give up, though. She's stubborn to a fault, even rushing headlong into situations while ignoring advice from wiser, more experienced friends. Like the time she started a civil war between superheroes, or when she completely ignored her damaging addiction to alcohol. Uh, yeah, Carol is a badass with a hell of a lot of power. At face! Tony Stark of all people thinks you have a drinking problem? You should probably listen to him instead of trying to fly into space while completely wasted. Yeah. Regardless, Captain Marvel is a seasoned hero with a record that most would be envious of. Hell, yeah. she's such a pillar. She's named after the publishing company itself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Hey, check your title up here. Okay. All right, the combatants are It set. is time to Let's send this skip debate the once and for fucking all. ad. But first, it's time for some scrumptious blue apron. Blah, 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 blah. Now I'm a man who likes a good home-cooked meal. But go on out. Okay, so. I guess it's going to come down to if they... Who can absorb whose powers? Um... Can 18 absorb the power of a star? And can Captain Marvel absorb key energy? Because it talked about electricity, it talked about all this kind of stuff. Uh, magic, but key is not magic. Key is personal strength and will and control and... All the awesome stuff that, you know, I hope to achieve myself someday. A little squirrel there. I love that background. Sprite artists are very underappreciated. I'm going to say, I really don't know anything about Captain Marvel, just what they said. I thought her name was Kamala Khan and that she was British. Uh. Uh. I mean, I've heard of Carol Danvers, but I couldn't connect her to a character. So I don't know, because, like I said, those are two unknown factors to me. And they're probably going to say, oh yeah, and this character could absorb all that other amazing stuff. By the way, the holes in this are from Athena. Um, if you've ever wondered, um, look at that. Oh, in case you're wondering about, like, how dark it is in here and stuff, it's noon. Okay, now let's get to watching. Let's roll gun die. <laughs> Jazzy music starting up. I'm just looking at it like, what is this thing doing in a tree? Coming with me. Give me a break, lady. Yeah. I've been looking for that thing all day. I've reached voice. Don't make me hurt you. Yeah. Good luck with that. She's just standing on her tiptoes in that pose. Sprite battles have become a lot more cinematic. I really don't have time for this. <laughs> well, there's a move you can't use against Krillin. Well, actually, no, later you can. What a pest. No fair! That's playing dirty! Time to clean up then. I guess later he does grow his hair out. Because he's not naturally bald, it said. He's shaving his head the whole time. Surprise! Thanks for the energy. She went first! I can take whatever you give and dish it back twice as hard! Danvers just flees. <laughs> Have a taste of your own energy. Oh, okay. Surprise. I can do it too. Ah! One of these days her hair's just gonna stand on end when she does that. Of course, you know, this 
means war. Stop. And that's that. Damn! Ouch. She now walked away without the ball. Blow. Captain Marvel may have been one of the Avengers' mightiest warriors, but she couldn't stand up to the impressive power, speed, and expertise of Android 18. First off, the numbers don't lie. When it comes to speed, Carol's best record put her in just under 200,000 miles per I'm hour. I'm not going to lie, I actually forgot what her record faster. was. <laughs> well, I couldn't match all, them up. Marvel's durability and strength feet simply pale in comparison to 18's. The only way Marvel's power could match 18's was to absorb enough energy to reach her binary form. But 18 is no stranger to that technique. There's no doubt she recognized what Carol was doing and stopped feeding her energy. Even if Carol had somehow achieved the full force of binary, that wouldn't have guaranteed a win. I mean, the last time we saw binary in the comics, she was taken down by some alien guns. Yes, she's wow. not as good at absorbing energy as she thought. Well, what's in the alien With guns? Superior speed, strength, tactics, and endurance. Android 18 simply wore Captain Marvel down until it was time to go in for the kill. And that's why Captain Marvel lost by T K O. God, that one was awful. The winner is Android 18. Hey, don't go away. We're about to reveal the matchup for the next episode of Death Bath. Yeah, and if you want to see the on come on. Episode, click the button over there and start a first membership trial. Helps us out a lot. Yeah, it's not. Okay. Means nothing to me. Okay. So. I mean, I can't really quibble with the results simply because I know nothing about Captain Marvel, as I said. Um, I do want to talk about something else, though. I love Team Four Star. I watch something of theirs, like, every day. That is how much I love them. But I think the fan base loves them, like... Uh, I don't want to say a little too much, but I think they're taken as... <sighs> more important than they should be. And I really hesitate to say that, because they're very important, not only to the Dragon Ball franchise fandom, but also to the concepts of fandom in general. They are... They're the fanboys who made good. And they're, they show that fan works can be taken seriously, that they can be done on such a high level of quality, that even the professionals take notice. <sighs> they expand on the canon. They, I mean, that whole scene they did with 16's past, that was just them. I mean, they took an element of 16's backstory that wasn't in the show. It was just something Toriyama said in an interview. And they made a scene about it where he's talking to his dad on this video file. And it was really emotional. And it's like you really made you feel for the guy. Gosh, so he had a pet parakeet. <laughs> Which got blown up. But mm. <laughs> Although it's interesting because the video... Um, that they made implied that he died in the explosion, even though the official word is that he got killed by a bullet. So, I don't know, maybe it was friendly fire while they were trying to kill Goku. <laughs> anyway, um... Team Four Star is wonderful, and I cannot overstate that. But they are overused. Um, I know Death Battle loves them, and rightfully so, but I don't know, like in One Minute Melee, um, Piccolo versus uh, Martian Manhunter, you had the Team Four Star invention of Nail and Kami talking in Piccolo's head, complete with their, you know, disembodied heads showing what was going on, but I just got screen flicker. How is it too bright in here? How? Uh, but like, I feel like people forget 
that it is a fan work sometimes. I mean, that attests to its high level of quality, but, and I mean, honestly, having the voices does make sense. Um, having things like a note on 17 and 18's history does make sense. But it's still a fan work. And I think at the end of the day, people need to realize that. And even though I'm jealous, I want my fan works to be taken as canon. And I think every other fan artist and fan writer and everything I mean, you know, there was that Sombra cosplayer who got her dance put in Overwatch. But, you know, that's that's a more realistic expectation. Um, not expectation, a more realistic manifestation. Rather than completely dominating the fan base. And it's really hard for me to say this because I cannot overstate my love for Team Four Star enough. Uh, I mean, they were the ones who got me into Dragon Ball. I have spent hundreds of dollars on the manga. And, I mean, that's all spread out. I'm not dumping it at once. So, yes, I am spending money responsibly. But, like, I've got a Loboma figure. I've got um, Vegeta's Badman shirt figure. Um... I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to start on Super pretty soon. Um, I mean, they got me into this franchise. And I love them for it. And I just plain love them. But uh, it's just so hard to say this about them. You know, because they're fantastic. They're wonderful. But they are not canon. That's the thing. And I don't know. I just kind of wish <laughs> someday someone makes a video like this about me. You know? It, it's like, is that the goal of every fan who produces content to, <sighs> to have someone rant about how they aren't actually canon? Uh, okay, I have nothing to say about this battle. I have nothing to say about the next battle. It's not Kafka versus Sephiroth. It's not Mewtwo versus Black or Greymon. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I wonder who Krillin's going to fight, because you know they're going to put him in a fight sometime. Or Master Roshi. The only person I can think of for him, though, is Hapusai. But um, Hapusai isn't on that kind of level. I would like to see Ranma Satome in a battle, though. Um, I just can't think of any... Um, his ultimate attack can only be triggered by cats. So I don't know if it would be someone who's cat-themed, specifically as Ahama. Or just another shapeshifter in general. Who are some other shape-shifting martial artists? Let, let, you know, say something in the comments. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a magical girl battle. Um, what other characters do I want to see? Um, I guess Tara Branford. Um, I want to see another Pokemon starter battle royale. Um, but they'd have to have six more at this point, And that's just not feasible. Either that or put Gens 2 through 7 all in one single video, but then it would be like an hour long and most of it would just be going through the deck entries. So, and then the actual battle would take like <laughs> half an hour. It would rival all, like, it would probably be twice as long as both of the Goku versus Superman fights. Hmm. You know, I know they've said that when they finally do end the series, the last battle is going to be Wiz versus Boomstick. But I want the penultimate battle in that case to be a royale between all of the winners. And at this 
point, just at this point, I think Kirby would win. <laughs> I guess it would depend on how many other fighters he could suck up at the same time. And of course, uh, Chuck Norris versus Sega Sanshiro would still never have a resolution. <laughs> they continued the theme of uh, whoever powers up first loses. Um, mm, Vegeta versus Shadow still remains the lone exception. Um, Shadow versus Mewtwo, they powered up at pretty much the same time. Um, although Shadow did start first. Wouldn't mind seeing Haruta in a death battle, but, uh, I mean, his most impressive feat was picking up, um, Saturn's Rhyperior and throwing it across the room. And actually, no, his most impressive feat was befriending Cyrus, but, <laughs> uh, I don't know, nobody would put Haruta in a death battle, even though, um, probably his most... Uh, his best opponent would be Marcus from Digimon. And just on a one-on-one, -on -one, I think Haruta would beat the living shit out of him. Um, but then you get their partners involved, and I don't know. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, I'm gonna go. I haven't eaten yet. Um, I tried uh, getting Athena in this video, and she bit me because I interrupted her breakfast, so I don't know. I might do an E3 wrap-up later on. I don't know. 